Hello and warm welcome to today's talk, Wednesday the 3rd of August. Now, we're going to be looking at vaccine safety data as reported by the Paul Ehrlich Institute in Germany. I found this data clear and transparent. It's a pity other countries don't do the same. So let's get straight down to it now. Now, um, this is the Paul Ehrlich Institute and, as I say, a transparent report. Now, um, these are reports received between the 27th of December 2020, which is when the German authorities started their vaccination campaign, all the way up to the 31st of March 2022. So we've got a pretty big data set. A total of 172 million vaccinations. Now, this is vaccinations, 172 million. This is vaccinations, uh, not people vaccinated. So this is doses of vaccine given. And I like the way that they, they do this because that's what we want to know. We want to know the risk per dose given is very useful. And they've received 269,233 reports of suspected adverse events. Now, we are going to unpack this a bit later, suspected adverse events, what that means. But for now, let's just look at the rates. Overall rate of uh, reporting for all vaccines. Now, this is the overall rate of serious and less serious events. 1.7 reports per 1,000 vaccines, and according to my maths, that is 0.17%. Um, higher than I uh, suspected it might be, but that's the data from Germany. So that's overall reporting rate for all vaccines. But when we look at the more serious events, Reporting rates for serious events is 0.2 per 1,000 doses, according to my maths, 0.02%, or one serious um, adverse event per 5,000 doses of vaccine given. Now, given that we are in Omicron times now, and for the vast majority of people, not all, but for the vast majority of people, this is a much less serious infection, the risk-benefit analysis has changed. And I really feel it's time for the risk benefit analysis to be taken fully into account before we uh, carry on with uh, further interventions. We need to know the risk benefit analysis and the Paul Ehrlich Institute is very aware of this and we'll point that out in a minute. Now let's just look at the, um, the side effects that have been reported here. Now these are per 100,000 uh, vaccine doses. Uh, so pulmonary embolism, clearly quite serious, a clot in the lungs. Um, then erythema is redness, pain, palpitations, aware of the heartbeat, hypoesthesia, lack of feeling, um, itching, myocarditis. All, all, all of them are there. Um, I'm not going to go through them all in detail, but they're all detailed. And coming on to the more common ones, again, we see vomiting, um, cardiac arrhythmias, pain in extremities, difficulty breathing, rash, malaise. You can look through these. They're all there. So they're the actual uh, headache, of course, very common, fatigue, very common, pain at the injection site, obviously. Um, th these are the more common ones. So they're, they're the actual adverse events per 100,000 uh, doses of, uh, of vaccine. So that's quite... That's quite um, I think that's quite useful to know what the particular the particular events are. Now, just before we go on, I will show you the site that this comes from. So, you know, this is um, directly from the Paul Ehrlich Institute. This is the site here. Um, it does have the safety padlock at the top of the site. Um, you can go on to it. The information's there. You can click on it. You can get the full reports. It's very transparent, very clear what they're talking about. And there's a full... Uh, yeah, there's, there's, full, there's full details of uh, the full safety report, for example, I think is under this one here. So, again, full details, very clear. And of course, it might not have escaped your notice. I'm sure, in fact, it hasn't that this is German. So this is the full English language uh, version that the German authorities have uh, kindly supplied for international uh, enlightenment. So um, get, get, getting back to the report, uh, definitions... Um, adverse events are noxious and uh, unintended reactions to the medicinal product. That's their definitions. 
Um, now, um, the vaccines that we used, 73% uh, Pfizer, 17% uh, Moderna, 7.4% AstraZeneca, 2.1% Janssen and 0.1% uh, Novavax. Um, you can get the full details on those again from the, from the site where that is supplied. Now, um, before we go on, I think we should notice that um, this is the overall, these are the overall figures. This is the amount of uh, adverse events reported. Now, these are reported after the vaccine has been given. So you could say that these are simply temporal correlations. Vaccine given, adverse event reported. It does not demonstrate causality. So the real number of adverse events could be less than this. But there again, we can assume that not all adverse events were reported or recognised as such. So that number could actually, that would tend to increase that number. Or vaccine adverse effects might be delayed for a period of time outside the time frame and have not yet manifest. So that could be higher than that number. So this is the number that's actually reported. Temporal correlations may actually be lower than that. that the fact that some, some people are going to have these adverse events after the vaccine, which would tend to lower that number. But as we say, um, lack of reporting could actually increase that number. But that's the data that we have. And uh, we've looked at the particular effects. Now, um, further things to notice from this report. Um, Reporting rate after the booster Pfizer of Pfizer and Moderna was lower than after the primary immunisation. So it seems that with Pfizer and Moderna, um, the primary immunisation was associated with a higher rate of these, um, these adverse reactions. I'm just looking for the precise term. Yeah, ad 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 adverse events is what we call them. I don't want to get this wrong. These are described as adverse uh, events. Uh, serious adverse events and uh, overall reporting rates for all vaccines. So, um, Paul Ehrlich Institute will closely monitor, continue to investigate cases of myocarditis, pericarditis, of course, thrombosis, which is the blood clots, immunologically mediated adverse events, such as immune thrombocytopenia, where there's not enough platelets in the blood that can lead to bleeding complications and can actually, as the platelets are used up, can actually lead to clotting complications as well. It can lead to both. Occurring after administrations of approved vaccines. So we see the temporal correlation, not necessarily caused by the vaccine, but of course not all vaccine uh, adverse events necessarily identified. Full detailed report there. Uh, now, this is the full detailed report here. Uh, that is the link for it. Um, it's very, very, very readable. Um, given that, that this is written, uh, this is the English language version, it's much easier to understand than um, certain other authorities uh, might uh, present their data. Uh, personally, I find it a lot easier to read than CDC information, for example. That's just me. Um, maybe I have difficulty with the American uh, uh, modality of expression. But I did find this particularly easy to uh, understand. Um, other things to notice. The German Paul Ehrlich Institute Authority, responsible for monitoring and safety of vaccines and biomedicines. Good. Uh, Institute's Division of Pharmacovigilance collects uh, and reviews reports on adverse drugs effects. So this is the Paul Ehrlich Institute of Pharmacovigilance. This, this is post-trial post-trial data collecting and of course this is good I mean most countries collect this but the, the, the Germans present it very very clearly uh, in, in my uh, or clearly in a way that I'm able to understand anyway uh, reporting suspected cases of adverse events is a central pillar for being able to judge safety of uh, medicines of course we need to know the data New signals, anything cropping up, can be detected in a timely manner, early, hopefully. <laughs> um, and the risk-benefit profile of vaccines can be continuously monitored. This is what we need to look at. The risk-benefit analysis. And personally, I'm interested in the risk-benefit analysis uh, for me. 
this should be done, I believe, on an individual basis. What is the risk benefit analysis for the individual? And this data allows us more accurately to make these kind of assessments. Uh, even reactions with a timely uh, relation to a vaccine do not necessarily have a causal relationship. So these are temporal correlations. Therefore, it may represent over-reporting. But as we said, not all adverse events may be reported. Uh, safety reports. Um, open communication of risk includes potential ones is a prerequisite for high acceptance rates of vaccine amongst the population. We have to have trust. The benefits of the COVID-19 vaccination for the health of individuals and the population, as well as their effect in combating pandemic, uh, the pandemic essentially depends on confidence in the vaccine is essential to get the benefits of the vaccine. So we have to have confidence and we can only have confidence when we have transparent data. Paul Ehrlich Institute uh, publishes continuously all suspected cases reported in Germany. Excellent. It's, this is an ongoing basis. This is a summary report. Um, and adverse events of vaccination and complications in a temporal relationship with the COVID-19 vaccine. And of course, it's up to uh, hopefully the further aspects of pharmacovigilance that uh, clinicians can evaluate the probability that any adverse events is actually caused by the vaccine uh, or, or it's a temporal correlation that they can they can hopefully be in a position in a specific case by case basis to evaluate uh, causality um, reporting suspected cases for adverse events healthcare providers of course marketing authorization holder and persons vaccinated or their relatives so um there we go. Um, that's the report. Um, this is the the bottom line, which is really the, uh, the the top line, is the overall numbers. And uh, just to close and summarise, that's what they are there. 172 million vaccines, 296,000 reports of suspected adverse events, 0.17% of overall adverse events. And for the more serious adverse events, it was 0.02%, uh, one per 5,000 doses of vaccine. So come on other countries, let's have similar uh, transparency in reporting. So e e even someone like me can understand it. That would be great. Uh, thank you and thank you for watching.